Hey guys, Jack here, and today I'm bringing you something a little different for my channel that I wanted to try my hand at, and also something that I thought you guys would actually find quite interesting, hopefully. Especially if you're into hardware and that sort of shizzle. So today, I'm reviewing a gaming PC. Never been done before on this channel, and there it is, the little butte. Now this is the Gladiator Blizzard OC. Of course, it's from Gladiator Computers, who are a UK-based company. I contacted several different pre-built PC retailers and Gladiator were on board with the idea and as such they agreed to send me one of these PCs over for review. Unfortunately, I don't get to keep it, but it's been here for around two weeks now so I've had plenty of time to record footage on it and gauge what sort of performance it's got. So what's in the box then? What are the components? Well the case is a bit Fenix Phenom M80X cube case, very nice looking, nice and stylish, also a bit smaller in height than your usual PC case. Makes carrying it around a little easier of course if you go to a lot of LAN parties regularly. But it does mean that your components get a little bit cramped in there and a bit fiddly to work with sometimes. Also as you can see it's white so don't go touching this with grubby fingers or don't let your little three year old cousin next to it because you're going to get some nasty prints on there okay. On the side of the case you've got the usual power on restart, audio jacks and two USB 3 ports. On the back side we've got all sorts of useful connectivity here, two DVI-D, one HDMI and one display port on the graphics card, six 3.5mm audio ports, four USB 3 ports, Ethernet for your internets, then we've got the onboard graphics options although we're not going to be using those because we've got a dedicated graphics card, optical audio if you want to use that, two more USB 2.0 ports and a PS2 keyboard mouse connection, who's going to use that? Don't know but it's there anyway and of course we've got your power at the bottom. Also worth noting that you can see one of the 120mm exhaust fans on the back there which is blowing hot air out of the case. On the top we've got a dust filter grill thingy that can be removed and cleaned if you wish and inside there you get a peek of the two 120mm fans that bring cool air into the case and through the radiator into the CPU cooler. Getting in the case is easy, no screwdriver required, you just got to remove the two thumb screws at the back, pop the side off and undo the panel exterior connectors there. Now we can see the inside, the first thing you'll notice is the hard drive panel at the side there. On the top we've got a Samsung 120GB EVO SSD. It's got the operating system on there and also room for a few of your favourite games and applications for some super speedy loading times. The SSD is an optional choice for this build, it does cost a little more, you don't have to have it but nowadays SSDs are actually a lot more affordable and I'd certainly recommend having one in your system. It does make a massive difference to loading times and just general navigation of your operating system and applications. The storage hard drive is at the bottom there on the other side of the panel, that's why you can't see it. And this is a 2TB Seagate Barracuda SATA 3 hard drive. More than enough space there for all of your games, apps, music, whatever disgusting things you might want to hide on your PC. You can just cram it all into that hard drive, 2TB it's quite a lot of space. Maybe you want to record your gameplay footage so you've got that option too with such a big hard drive but we're going to look more into that later on in the video. Removing the hard drive panel gives you a much better look inside the PC at the guts of this thing so let's have a look and see what we've got in there. On the left side is the Corsair CX600 power supply. 600 watts is more than enough for a system like this. Corsair, a very reliable brand for PSUs. I have a Corsair PSU in my system. Another 120mm fan at the bottom and there's the one on the back which I pointed out earlier. The CPU in here is an Intel i7-4770K quad core with hyper threading. Arguably the best gaming processor you can buy right now. And in this system Gladiator have actually pre-overclocked it for you to 4.2GHz. And it's all cooled by the Corsair H100 water cooler unit here. And that basically means that this thing is very quiet and the temperatures are great as I'll show you further into the video. We've got the graphics card at the top there, Captain Obvious, and this is an MSI NVIDIA GTX 770, the 2GB GDDR5 version. You also get a couple of free games with that as well, I think, which is pretty cool. And this particular card comes overclocked as standard and has MSI's custom twin Froza, Froza fan unit on it. Hope I said that right. Sorry, MSI, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce Froza. Never really come across that word before. Anyways, down here, 8 gigabytes of crucial ballistic 1600 megahertz DDR3 memory. Two sticks there, each of them 4 gigabytes in total, running in dual channel mode for the best performance. And of course, the motherboard is a gigabyte GAZ87MX-D3H. Getting kind of confused now with all these letters and numbers. But if you want to check the exact spec of this system, I've put it down in the description below for you. 
The system also came with an external USB DVD drive, so if you've still got media you want to play or install from a disc, you can do that. Uh, the operating system is Windows 8.1 pre-installed and ready to use so you don't have to worry about a thing also i love the fact that there's no crap on it sometimes pre-built systems come with a load of uh you know free trials like norton on there avast whatever but um no i mean this literally just had windows 8.1 on it which was uh which was nice to see now if you're new to windows 8.1 and coming from windows 7 i definitely recommend getting a start bar mod because the Windows 8.1 start button still launches the Windows 8 UI, which I think is pretty terrible on PC. Um, I use a mod called Stardock. Works a treat for me. It's like $5. And with it, I get the performance benefits of Windows 8.1 with the UI of Windows 7. Uh, everyone's a winner. Right, so gaming performance. That's what you want to see. How does this PC perform in video games? I'll show you. And what I've done here is recorded a load of actual gameplay. I think a lot of reviewers sometimes just throw numbers at you and they show you some 3D Mark scores and you walk away, you still don't actually get an idea of how a system's going to perform in games. So what I've done here is load up some relevant games that you'd probably play if you were a PC gamer, including multiplayer and single player, to show you exactly what sort of frame rate you'll get. You can see the FPS in the top right hand corner and also the settings I'm running each game at before the gameplay footage rolls. Feel free to pause the video at any time so you can get a better look at the settings if you wish. Um, another note, all of the games are running at 1920 by 1080 resolution. I certainly think that that's the resolution this system is aimed at when you take the graphics card and the CPU into account. You could go for higher resolutions than this, like 1440p maybe, you could definitely get away with it, but you probably have to reduce some of the quality. But because I wanted to max out the settings and make the games look as good as they could be and still get a playable frame rate, I think that 1920 by 1080 is the best fit here in my opinion and it looks awesome. I mean it's a very high resolution still so over to the games.
Okay, Bandit, make the diversion. Profit, let's go. Securing Bravo. Hope you enjoyed that little montage. I thought I'd include 3D Mark as well, seeing as a lot of reviewers and potential buyers still use that as a benchmark sometimes. And this system happened to hit 7067 on the default Fire Strike test. You could get more points than that if you wanted to by overclocking the GPU and the CPU a little bit more, but I couldn't see you pushing the 4770K any further than 4.5 gigahertz, you know, 4.4, 4.5 with the current cooler on there. Um, in the Cinebench R15, we got a score of 827, pretty standard for this type of system. Now what about temperature and noise, obviously that's very important. How does the Blizzard stack up here? 
Well, harking back to my PC building days when I sold PCs to customers, I'd use a program called Prime95 or Intel Burn Test to max out the CPU. You could also use it to check out if an overclock was stable and keep an eye on your temperatures. So naturally, I downloaded that, whacked on 8 calculation threads and just let it rip. Now, with the system being in a smaller case, things can tend to be a bit warmer in there, but for a 4.2 GHz overclock on a 4770K, which is an i7 processor, I think the Gladiator have done a pretty good job here. I didn't see the CPU temperature go over 71 degrees C, which is a great result on full load, and in terms of heavy gaming, you're looking at around maximum 50 to 60 C. So obviously those four system fans and the H100 cooler on there are doing a good job. In terms of noise, the system is very quiet, and this is mainly attributed to the fact that you don't have the stock cooler on the graphics card and there's no CPU fan there either. The twin Frozer fans on the graphics card, Frozer, Frozer, I don't know. There's that word again. So they idle at 1000 RPM and they max out at around 1300 to 1400 RPM. And that means that they only notch up around 32 dBA when you're gaming. So basically it's it's a pretty quiet game system. Yeah, you put it that way. Now, as I'm a YouTuber, I love recording my gameplay. Kind of obvious that one. Turns out everyone else does now too. Everyone wants to set up a YouTube channel or a Twitch. They want to upload their gameplay, share it with their mates, watch it back. And I just wanted to explore the possibility. Could you do that with this particular system? Could you do that with the Blizzard? Uh, short answer, yes, you could. The number one reason, of course, is, uh, is Shadowplay. You've got an NVIDIA card in here. Shadowplay works great on Windows 8.1. Doesn't hit your performance at all. You can do 1080p, 60fps. So recording your gameplay wouldn't be a problem. You can even use DxTory if you want. Obviously, that's going to hit your performance a bit more than Shadowplay, but you get more audio options there. So uh, you could use both for this system, which is what I do on my gaming PC and recording PC. I use a combination of Shadowplay. Uh, when I'm playing on my own and when I'm playing with friends, I use the XTory. What about editing with Sony Vegas or Premiere? Well, 8 gigabytes of memory is a little on the low side for really heavy editing, you know, maybe if you're using After Effects, but it's perfectly fine for your average gameplay session. The i7-4770K CPU in there is hyper-threaded too, which basically means that you can have 8 processing threads rendering a video at once therefore decreasing the time it takes and making the whole editing process smoother and just a bit more responsive you know you, you, you could pull it off with this system in terms of streaming to twitch using obs that's open broadcast software would work great with this pc i'd be looking at around a 720p 3000 bit rate 30 fps on this kind of setup you could get some pretty nice results with those settings and that wouldn't hit your frame rate too hard either so i'm pretty confident that you could stream consistently with this machine without damaging the quality of video or your gameplay performance too much overall i'm pretty impressed with this system great performance across the board comes pre-overclocked the build quality was good, although I think the cable management could have been a bit tidier on the inside there. And so what about the cost? How much is a high-spec gaming system like this going to set you back? Well, on the Gladiator PC website, the standard build of the Blizzard OC is sold at £925, including VAT. That is the default system, and as I mentioned earlier, you can customise it if you want to. In my case, I added the 120GB Samsung Evo SSD for the boot drive and a couple of games, which increased the total price to £990.70, including VAT. Now, whenever you find out the cost of a pre-built system from an online retailer, you should always approach it with caution and just do some research. Um, personally, I always like to dig around a little to find out more about the components, because I love to see how much you could buy each part for, and then go ahead and build the PC for yourself ideally saving yourself a bit of money. It's no lie that certain pre-built gaming PC retailers have a reputation of ripping the customer off somewhat. So what I've done is found every component in this Gladiator Blizzard PC on aria.co.uk, that's a UK retailer. I've added it to my basket and that way we can see the total cost of buying the parts individually and how much money you'd save if you were to build the PC yourself. Take a look at this, £1,052.59. What? So based on this, assuming I haven't messed up here or something, it's actually £61.89 cheaper to buy this system pre-built rather than put it together yourself. And that really surprised me. All of these components are exactly the same as the ones in the review PC that Gladiator sent me. Those are average prices as well. You can't really get them much cheaper than that anywhere else in the UK. 
So either Gladiator have got some ridiculous trade prices and the customer's just getting a really good deal here or there's some sort of a mistake. Now, assuming there's no mistake, if you buy it pre-built, you'd be getting the system built for you, overclocked, tested, Windows installed, delivered. Uh, you've got finance options on there as well if you want to do that, four-year warranty. So if anything goes wrong, you can just send it back and they'll fix it. And after seeing how much it would cost to build this yourself versus having it done for you, I definitely recommend buying a system like this if you're looking for a high-spec pre-built gaming PC. I think if you're gaming on a 1920 by 1080 monitor or lower, this system will pretty much hammer every game on maximum graphics for the next few years. It's certainly a long-term investment, and if you're working with 1440p or 4K, you're probably going to need more horsepower than what you've got in here. Ultimately, £990 is a lot of money. It's almost a grand. But I don't think that Gladiator are wrong with the price here, and I think they're in the right sort of ballpark with other competing sites like Overclockers, Dino PC, and Scan. Uh, this is the kind of money you should expect to pay for a 1080p gaming system if, and this is a big if, if you want to play all the latest games on the maxed out graphics. Keep in mind you don't need to spend this much money if you're gaming at a lower resolution or you don't care about always having the best possible graphics and insane frame rates in all of your games. This is very much an enthusiast system. This is for the guy or the girl that loves blasting out 64 player Battlefield 4 on ultra settings, for, for playing Armour 3 for hours on end, for making YouTube videos, for streaming. That's the sort of potential options you have here with a system like this. That's who it's aimed at and keep that in mind before you put your money down yeah and i think that's about it for the review guys i hope you enjoyed this and it gives you a good insight into pre-built gaming pcs the sort of actual real world performance you can expect to get from a gaming system like this from a gamer's perspective pretty cool i certainly enjoyed making this video and a big thanks to gladiator who let me borrow this pc for a couple of weeks to review it all of the important links and information is in the description below i've also linked to this particular pc if you want to go and check it out uh it's all down there go and have a look Thanks very much for watching. If you made it this far, congratulations. The secret phrase I want to see in the comments below is bread makes you fat. Don't disappoint me, guys. If you'd like to see more hardware-related videos like this, please let me know. Your feedback is always very valuable to me. Leave a rating and a comment. I'll see you in the next one.